Hey everybody, it's me, Mr. Singer, your favorite math teacher, and today we're going to learn about ratio tables. Ratio tables are a really easy way to do stuff with ratios. So let's look at what we just saw in that cool video. That guy driving, his name was Zero, and he just drove 8 kilometers, 8 kilometers in 60 seconds. So we write that as a ratio, just like we did before with other ratios. 8 kilometers in 60 seconds. He's driving pretty fast. At this rate, how long will it take to drive 2 kilometers? So the table is very handy. We can just say, what do we have to do to 8 to make it a 2? Well, 8 divided by 4 equals 2. So if we do divide by 4 there, we've got to do the same thing here. So 60 divided by 4 is 15. So now we know that it will take 15 seconds to drive 2 kilometers. You get how that works? Let's try another one. Let's clear all this stuff. All right, so here we have uh, a pretty simple one. Emily gets $7 every week. How much will she get after four weeks? Well, let's put what we know here. We know she gets $7, so we put a 7 there, every week. That means every one week. So in one week, she gets $7. How about in two weeks, how much will she get? In two weeks, she would get $14, right? I'm going to draw another line here. And then in three weeks, what would she get? Well, it's just 7 times 3, which is 21. And so we want to find out four weeks because it says four weeks. It's always good to know what you need to find out. In four weeks, she's going to make 4 times 7, which is $28. You could have also just said, okay, 1 times 4 is 4, and 7 times 4 is 28. Got it? Cool. Okay, so now let's look at this one. It's a little bit more complicated. On a trip to Mexico, Eileen exchanged $270 for 3,000 pesos. So that's what we have here. She brought two. 170 American dollars and got 3,000 Mexican pesos for it. When she got back, she had 100 pesos left over. So now she's back in California. She's 100 pesos and she wants to figure out how many dollars is that worth. So let's see how we can do that with some ratios. So we have to convert 3,000 into 100. So that's kind of complicated. So let's do something easy. Um, there is a number that fits into both of these. Let's divide by 3, right? So if I divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. So 270 divided by 3. Well, I know 3 goes into 27 9 times. And 3 goes into 0, 0 times. So that's a 90. So then I have to divide this by 3 also. 3,000 divided by 3. Well, that's easy. That's 1,000. That still doesn't get me to 100, but it gets me closer. So now I can divide. What, what can I divide by from 1,000 to get to 100? Oh, divide by 10. So here, to get to 100, I divide by 10. So that means here I also have to divide by 10. Divide by 10. And that's easy. 9 divided by 10 is 9. So that means if she has 100 pesos, it's worth $9. Got it? Cool. Let's try the next one. So now, oh look, we have Ramon. Ramon rides his bike across the country and covers 190 miles every four days. Use the table to figure out how far he rides in six days. So first we look at what information do we have. Here we have miles and days, and here we have 190 miles, so I'm going to put 190 here, every four days. And what do we want to find out? Use the table to figure out how far he rides in six days. So this is what we want to find out. In six days, how many miles does he go? So we have to somehow convert four to six. Now this is a little bit harder because you can't just say, oh, four times something is six or four divided by something is six. So we're going to have to break it down a little bit. So let's do a divide by two first, right? So if I do divide by two, here, 4 divided by 2, well, that's just 2. If I do divide by 2 in the bottom, I have to do the same thing on the top. 190 
divided by 2. And it's okay to use a piece of paper for this, but I'll just do it the quicker way. 190 divided by 2 is 95. Great. That still doesn't tell us how far he goes in 6 days. So now we have to do again, what do we have to do to 2 to make it a 6? Well, we do times 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. That means we have to do 95 times 3 on this side. 95 times 3. I'll put a little times 3 here. 95 times 3. Let's see. Do it on a piece of paper. Oh, it's 285. So now I know that in 6 days, it will go 285 miles. So I want to make sure you guys realize that. So we had to do divide by 2, then times 3. So it's called scaling. Sometimes you scale it back, then you scale it forward. Got it? Okay. And you can see how knowing your times tables is really important for this kind of thing. All right, so let's try one more like this. This one is straight out of the book, and it's a little bit harder, but I think we can do it. So it says a punch recipe. Punch is like fruit punch, you know, like a drink. Uh, that serves 24 people, calls for 4 liters of soda, 2 pints of sherbet, and 6 cups of ice. So, let's see what we know so far. I'm going to go to the drawing. And so it serves 24 people. So here I'm going to put 24. And for 24 people, it uses 4 liters of soda. So if soda gets a 4. And 2 pints of sherbet. So I'll put a 2 here. And 6 cups of ice, right? So ice gets a 6. So now it's asking, how much of each ingredient would we need to serve 12 people? So let's, we, they give us the people's 12. So what do I have to do to 24 to make it 12? Well, I have to divide by 2, right? 24 divided by 2 is 12. So I have to divide by 2 on all of these. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Easy, right? Well, what if they gave us something else? Like, um, what if they wanted it to be 36 people? Ooh, that's a hard one. So I'm going to put a 36 over here. So to go from 12 to 36, what do I have to do? Oh, I know. It's times 3, right? Times 3. 12 times 3 equals 36. So now 2 times 3 equals 6. 1 times 3 equals 3, and 3 times 3 equals 9. Got it? So now, if I needed to serve 36 people instead of 24, I would need 6 liters of soda, 3 pints of sherbet, and 9 uh, scoops of ice. Okay. That's great. Okay, so now let's go look in our books on page 40. So. Pause the video and go to page 40. Ready, go. All right, so you should be on page 40 now. And we're going to look at some examples of stuff that we really just did right now. So here it says, to make yellow icing, you mix six drops of yellow food coloring. Drops of yellow is six. With one cup of white. One cup of white. How much yellow food coloring should you mix with five cups of white icing to get the same shade? So if you want to find out five, well, one times five is five, and so six times five is 30, so then your answer would be 30. Got it? And this one is sort of like one of the ones that we did as an example as well. In a recent year, Joey Chestnut won a hot dog eating contest by eating nearly 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. Okay, so let's just pause and think about that. 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. I wouldn't be able to eat one hot dog in 12 minutes, but 66? That's crazy. But it's, it's true. He's the world champion. If he ate at a constant rate, determine how many hot dogs he ate every two minutes. So here's what they, they give us, right? We know that he ate 66 in 12 minutes, and we want to figure out what is it going to be in two minutes. So they're saying you can divide by 2 and then divide by 3. Or you could just say 12 divided by 6 is 2. So 66 divided by 6 
is 11. Got it? So that works that way too. So now I want you guys to try the goddess. So part A, a patient receives one liter of IV fluid every eight hours. At that rate, find how many hours it will take to receive four liters of IV fluid. So here it is, one liter, one liter of IV fluid every eight hours. And then we have to find out what will it be in, uh, how long will it take for four liters of IV fluid? So what goes in this box? I'll give you a hint, you have to do something to one to make it a four, then do the same for the eight. Ready, go. All right, so you should have figured out that one times four is four, and so then you have to do the same thing here. Eight times four is 32. So the answer to that is 32. Great, and now let's do letter B. To make cranberry jam, you need 12 cups of sugar for every 16 cups of cranberries. So here we go, 12 cups of sugar, 16 cups of cranberries. You know, that's a lot of sugar when you think about it. 12 cups of sugar, that's like, wow. Anyway, find the amount of sugar needed for four cups of cranberries. So that's why they have a four here. So I want you guys to figure this out. My hint is, what do you have to do to 16 to make it a four? And then do the same thing up there. Ready, go. All right, so you should have figured out that 16 divided by four is four. That means 12 divided by four is three. So there you go. And you can also think of it as 12 over 16. I can reduce that fraction to be three over four. Awesome. Let's go look on the next page. So this is what we were doing before with scaling, where if you look at this example, they have 10 cans of corn cost $4. How much were 15 cans of corn? Well, there's not any one um, operation that you can do to say 10 times something is 15 or 10 divided by something is 15. So what they do here is first you divide it. So 10 divided by two is five. And because now I know five, I can do five times three is 15. So if I do divide by two times three, I have to do the same on the bottom. Four divided by two is two, two times three is six. So therefore six is your answer to that one. Got it? Let's skip down to the got it, letter C on this, and see if you can figure that out. A child's height measures 105 centimeters. There's that. Estimate that height in inches. So they're giving you, they're telling you that in uh, 25 centimeters is the same as 10 inches, right? So 10 inches equals 25 centimeters. So what do we have to do to make the 25, we have to do something to make 25 105, and then do the same thing here. The hint is, you're gonna have to do two steps, right? So I'll give you a hint, this ends with a five. And so I wonder if, uh, here's my hint, you're gonna divide first and then multiply. So then the same here, you're gonna divide something and then you're going to multiply something. And my hint is there's a five. See if you can figure it out, ready, go. All right, so what you should have done is 25 divided by five, right? I, so I could divide by five there. 25 divided by five is five. So now I have to do 10 divided by five is two divided by five. And I, wrote, I did divide by five because I know that five goes into both 25 and 10, right? So you have five over two, but that still doesn't equal 105. So now I have to do five times something is 105. So five times 21 is 105, right? So if I do five times 21 there, I have to do times 21 here, and two times 21 is 42. So then my answer would be 42 inches. Got it? So 105 centimeters is the same as 42 inches. All right, cool, let's try some of these. Uh, guided practice, and the nice thing is, guess what? We did these exact ones on, like, on that slideshow. I might have changed the names, but that's it. So, on the guided practice, see if you can figure it out. If you were paying attention during the slideshow, then this should be pretty easy for you. Um, number one says, Santiago receives an allowance of $7 every week. I'm gonna just call this every one week. Well, they kind of do it there. How much does he receive after four weeks? Remember we did one just like this? 
So your answer is going to be this. What goes right there? Ready, go. All right, so you should have 28, right? Because you just do 1 times 4. So 7 times 4 is 28. All right, let's try number 2. Tanya runs 8 kilometers in 60 minutes. Oh, this we did this one too. At this rate, how long would it take her to run 2 kilometers? So here we have 8 kilometers, 60 minutes. How long will it take to go 2? So what goes below here? Ready, go. All right, so you should have figured out 8. I'll just write in here. 8 divided by 4 equals 2. 60 divided by 4 equals 15. Easy peasy, huh? Um, all right, let's try number three. Lamika buys 12 packs of juice that are on sale and pays a total of $48. Use a ratio table to determine how much Lamika will pay to buy eight more packs of juice boxes at the same store. So, to do this, all right, I hope you fill out the table a little bit, but then you'll do the rest on yourself. So she buys 12 packs of juice boxes, so that's a 12. And it costs her $48. And we want to find out eight. Now she wants to buy eight more uh, packs of juice boxes. So how much will it cost for eight juice boxes? We know 12 costs $48. What is eight going to cost? I'll give you a hint. You're going to want to divide by something and then multiply by something. Got it? You might want to find out like how much is one of these cost. There's my hint. If you can figure out how much one costs, then you'll figure out the eight, figure out the unit price first. Got it? All right, cool. All right, so what you should have done is 12 um, divided by 12, divide by 12 is one, 48 divided by 12 is four, and now I can easily say, well, one times eight, times eight is eight, four times eight is 32, so it costs $32. This is an, a big thing that we use a lot is you find the unit price. How much does one of them cost? Then you can figure out how much any of them cost. Got it? All right, so now what we're going to do is your homework is independent practice. So this is... Well, do page 43 and 44. Do numbers 1 through 6. Yeah, 43 and 44, problems 1 through 6. Yeah, do all your homework, oh yeah, oh yeah.